yo, what's up? Today we're gonna be learning an up the neck break to Salt Creek on the five string bluegrass banjo. This is going to be a continuation on the other video called how to play Salt Creek on the five string banjo. So if you haven't seen that video, pause this video right now, watch the other one, and uh, come back and finish this one. That being said, the tablature to this is available on patreon.com slash rickymeyer where you can find tablature, backing track, mp3s, live Q&A sessions, and a whole community that loves this kind of music. So um, that being said, let's take a look at the tablature. Okay, so here we have the first eight bars of uh, this up the neck break to Salt Creek. Um, I, I'm doing a few rhythmic motifs here that um, I, I, I want to have you guys all learn because they're really important for Scruggs style banjo. Again, the kind of banjo that I'm trying to show you is much more rhythmic in nature. It's much more role based in nature. And what I'm trying to give you is a kind of role vocabulary. So you can look at this tablature and not be so intimidated or have a better feel for what's going on. So this first measure goes like this. Another thing that this um, that this this particular arrangement has is use of double stops and a little bit of a uh, yeah let's call them double stops for now. So if you take a look at the first measure, we have um, these double stops happening on the first and second strings. Those are part of like a bigger G scale, and if you want to learn more about that, check out the modes of um, triple stops, modes of double stops. I have a few videos on that. But um, just you just can't have to memorize these cold five, three and five, eight and nine, and then ten and ten. Just just learn those. Um, but uh, a good thing to know, like the melody of Saw Creek, and I'm just adding rolls to that. That's basically the idea here. Um, what roll am I using? If you look closely, that's one forward roll, two forward roll, three forward rolls. <clears throat> so there's three forward rolls. What happens here is we play a thumb, and then we go into the forward rolls. So it's ba pa ka ta ka ta pa ka ta ka ta if that makes sense. So as long as you understand there's three forward rolls here, you'll be able to um, understand the larger picture. Uh, that thumb, so it's, um, if I play the, the roll open, that's the rhythmic motif of the first measure. I like to call um, ba pa ka ta ka ta ka this um that ba tika taka tika if you repeat that it'll sound like ba tika taka tika ba tika taka tika ba tika taka tika which is a really rhythm it's, it's an important rhythmic motif in scrug style banjo and we're going to uh be revisiting this i i sometimes call this like the bob dabalina roll because if you know bob dabalina mr bob dabalina mr bob dabalina mr bob it's a and it's like a yeah it's like a it's like two beat roll it's a, it's a good one so this roll, um, just understand it's a lot of four rolls and you're going through double stops. Um, I hope that makes sense. I wish there were people here to ask me questions. Okay, next one. This roll is uh, when we go to the F chord. Well, yeah, that actually, I ended, I ended right there. But this roll sounds like this. Don't be so intimidated. <clears throat> First of all, <clears throat> sorry, these four notes right here, um, that's one, two, thumb, two. It's the beginning of the Foggy Mountain Breaking Roll. That thing. So one, two, thumb, two. That's important. One, two, thumb, two. This guy right here, more of my students, I, when, I, when I'm doing this kind of stuff with my students, I always check to make sure if they know what this roll is. Because if you don't know immediately, you're going to have a problem. That is a thumb one, thumb two, otherwise known as a square roll, just on some different strings. But that is a th uh, thumb one, thumb two. It's a first inversion square roll. Um, so if you put those two uh, those two four note rolls together, and by the way, this this F chord it's a beta F, it's a second inversion F chord. So that's one two thumb two thumb one thumb two. So you got an alternate middle roll. This roll right here one two thumb two it's an alternate middle roll. This guy right here an alternate thumb roll also known as a square roll. Put those together you have an alternate middle then an alternate thumb. The first alternate middle roll starts on the index, so you can understand it. It's like an index alternate middle roll, kind of. And then square roll. 
You put those together. Okay, great, we got that. Okay, cool, so this next eight note roll, what is happening here? You may think it's intimidating, you may think it's scary, but if you think about it, it actually is exactly a forward-backward roll. <clears throat> That's, of course, if I played it open, but the first four notes right here, those take place on the inside strings. That's if I played it in open. I play it with the F chord. But what makes an inside roll is that the middle finger, that would be thumb one, two right there. The middle finger is going to the second string, thus making it an inside roll. So there you have thumb one, two, thumb. That is a four note thumb forward roll. That's a four note roll, four note forward roll that starts on the thumbs. So you got thumb one, thumb two. This roll right here, I, again, I, I drill my students on this all the time. What roll is this? They say very quickly, it's a middle reverse roll. Why is it a middle reverse roll? Because it's a middle, it's a middle, it's a reverse roll that starts on the middle finger. It's a four note section of a three note roll, basically. I, I talk more about that in other videos. But I'm hoping to just throw this stuff at you and just, just to give you the vocabulary. If you have questions, that's ah, okay. Uh, you, you'll get it down the road. You know, uh. So anyways, this thing, it's a four, it's an inside forward backward roll on a second version F chord. So you put that all together, then you got a pretty nasty sounding 16 note roll. And then you end on the, on the, on the open fifth string. I'm adamant, I, I, I am firm about this roll. You guys should learn this one. It's an excellent roll and it's very easy in the left hand, but then you just gotta get your roll vocabulary. Once again, the first four notes, alternate middle, the second four notes, that's a, a square, a, an alternate thumb roll. This one right here, that's a thumb forward. This one, middle reverse. So, that's that roll. And then we get back on the third measure. The third measure is the same as the first measure. Just to revisit what is happening in this measure. Um, thumb, so you got an eighth note pause right there, by the way. Thumb, thumb one, two, thumb one, two. So it's thumb and then three thumb forwards. Yeah, and that we call that. Yeah, that's a, that's kind of like a pinch on that ten. Yeah, so um, I hope I hope that makes sense. Um, this roll right here, you're all gonna love it because that's like a badass Scrug style way to end a um, end a phrase. Yeah. Um, this roll right here, again, I make all my students very aware of this, but this, these eight notes, that is a Foggy Mountain Breakdown roll. That's the eight note Foggy Mountain Breakdown roll. Right here, again, that's an alternate middle roll. That is the same roll as this one, that's seven, six, six, seven, six, seven. Same roll, one, two, thumb, two. That's an index alternate middle. So it's an alternate index, alternate middle roll that starts on the index finger. One, two, thumb, two. Very important to note that, alternate middle roll. This guy, what roll is that? That's right, a thumb forward roll. It's the same roll as this one. So you're beginning to, you kind of like look at this by the shape. That, what I have highlighted right there, that is a thumb forward. This right here is a thumb forward, the same thing. And this guy, you got two pinches. Don't forget to resolve that on the open fifth string. That's a good way to do it. Anyway, so that guy. You really gotta train the Foggy Mountain Breakdown roll. You gotta train that one. Okay, and then um, measures five through eight are the same as one through four, except uh, measure five has a little bit of a variation. All these notes are the same. What I've highlighted, all the notes are the same, except for this, that little slide. Um, you don't pluck that three, you slide into it. Um, and actually, the roll here is going to be the same as the roll here because we're going to use the thumb on that too. That's a thumb. Why do we use the thumb there? Because the thumb is the king. The thumb gives you all your power. The thumb gives you all your tone. The thumb actually takes advantage of gravity. You can like, you can just kind of let your hand drop and you get like that monstrous tone. Uh, you get a lot of tone from that. Okay, cool. So let's go to the next half. Um, actually, there's a there's a there's a ten right here. What that means is like now we're gonna. 
I don't write the slide in because when you write the slide, it sounds funny. It slides down for some reason. You hear that? So I just don't do it. But just know that there's a slide. Uh, and when you go, um, it doesn't have to be from the 10th string. It could be from anywhere. Just, just from the third string. Okay, cool. So what am I doing here? Again, like I said, this is a continuation on the previous lecture. Um, what we have here, remember, this is all role based. I'm trying to improve you guys. I'm trying to increase your banjo IQ. I'm trying to increase your rhythmic IQ. What is happening here? What I have highlighted, two reverse rolls, two middle reverse rolls. Right here, two thumb forward rolls with what we call a pivot note. That note right here is both a part of the reverse roll and a part of the forward roll. So um, if, if you just play this open, just look at the measure and just play the roll. It's a... That'll help you understand what's going on, okay? Um, two reverses, two forwards with a pivot note, okay? Two reverses, two forwards with a pivot note. Just understand that. Um, okay, cool. Now that you understand it's two reverses, two forwards with a pivot note, which is actually the same roll from the last time. So I'm building upon this so you guys can kind of get used to doing these this like these rolls in a, in a thousand different places. Um, let's talk about the double stops. The double stops here, we're going to go like this. So, um, so the first two, it's like a G chord, like an F chord, and then you kind of go to like a G7 chord, kind of, or a D minor, I, I don't know. I'm following the melody. First, what you should do is actually just kind of find it on the first string, just like this. That'll make sense. And do it with like just one finger, so you'll be like... And then actually you probably do it with your ring finger. Cause then you add your index finger on the third string and you go. And now I mean, you could find it with your index finger on the third string, like. Ooh. Right? Yeah. Something like that. You could do, you could mess around with the notes a little bit like. Something like that to make it more suspended. That's actually kind of hip. That's kind of hip. But nonetheless, the role is going to be the same. The idea is going to be the same. I'm sorry, I'm meandering. But um, yeah, you just want to find those double stops. And then we end it with the same thing. That's what's written right there. So uh, yeah, so basically these three um it's like g f and then like g7 kind of if you want to think about it like that um yeah the second measure of this thing it's the same exact roll measure nine and measure 10 measure 11 are all the exact same roll so just just follow just just understand that we're just messing around with the double stops on top of that this guy um now we're going like f c and then C. That's a two inversions of C right there. And then you end with the same lick. Um, going into it, so now you can see uh, right here there is. Oh, you son of a bitch! Uh, right here, what I've highlighted. It's kind of difficult. It's aw awkward to see right there. But there is a forward roll going into measure 13. It's not. It's. Oh, yeah, and it, ha and it happens right there, too. Yeah, I should have mentioned that earlier. There's, there's the forward roll going into it. There's the forward roll going into it. And then the ending I have is like, like it's just, it's just one, five, one. It's kind of like a power chord. Just, I don't know, it's, it's just cool. I just wanted to write something in there so you kind of get an idea of what's an easy way to improvise. Yeah. Anyways, so uh, yeah, that's Salt Creek. I hope you guys liked it. Um, another thing that I did, I didn't write this in because writing in kind of sucks. If you want to start it, it's just, that's kind of a thing. See if you can figure that one out by yourself. Thanks for watching.
watching. Peace.